I had a few hours spare, so I thought I would give my frame a thorough clean and a good detailing. Furthermore, I thought I'd come out my daily exercise in the beautiful British cloud shine to show you what I got up to and the result it produced. So I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get your frame looking absolutely fantastic and showroom fresh. Okay, so first things first, you need to wash it. And once you've washed it once, wash it again, especially for matte paint, because what you don't wanna be doing is dragging coarse grit and dirt around your frame, especially you know, if it's a matte finish, it will really deteriorate if you're rubbing it away with coarse grit. So we don't wanna be doing that. While you're at it, it's worth sprucing up the drivetrain, no harm in that whatsoever. And if you can, or if you need to, you know, maybe this is a good time to take care of any spots of high sealant you might have had spraying onto your frame or anything like that. So, you know, give it a good, a good once over, wash it, wash it again, make sure it's absolutely immaculate. Because what you don't want to happen is any grease or residue left on the frame is basically going to be a barrier between the polish and the frame. You don't want to be applying polish for it to sit on top of that layer of grease and it was, it's going to inhibit how well it does its job. Some of you might use a bike protect spray, which is really, really good because it inhibits moisture and corrosion between washes. However, if you're putting that on today, we're going to go for something a bit, a bit more kind of hardcore today. So it's really, really good that is to use between washes and as part of your regular maintenance. Today, we're going to be applying a frame polish and we're going to be taking our sweet time over it, okay? So to get your best results, we want to go onto just a clean, frame that has no grease, no, nothing to, to resist the polish, okay? So get it clean and then don't put any bike protect spray on. As good as it is, this time we're gonna stay away. Now, here is a big one. If you're gonna be using an aerosol on the frame, if you're gonna be using anything that comes in a spray at all, maybe, you know, I like to put a bit of silicon shine on the fork legs and on the shock shaft. If you're gonna be doing any of that and you're gonna be spraying it around like a baddie in a 70 James Bond film, Honestly, you are going to contaminate your brake pads before you can say Roger Moore. It really is so easy to do. If you can smell it, then it's probably getting on your brakes. So this is what I advise. Either use some protectors that cover the discs. Failing that, you know, it's really easy to just take your wheels away, take the brake pads out, and it's no longer a problem. Okay, so on to the frame detailing itself. For something to be shiny, it's gonna be really efficient at reflecting light. That means it's very smooth, okay? It hasn't got those dips, those peaks and troughs. Now, what you're doing when you're polishing it is on kind of a very micro level, is you are filling in those small gaps, those small kind of um, scratches and whatnot, okay? So not only are you gonna reduce the appearance of scratches, you're also gonna be changing kind of that top layer of paint on you know a really, really micro level. What you need is a good polish, but also a very soft microfiber cloth. You don't want to be using paper towel or kitchen roll because even on a very small level, they could be scratching or deteriorating the quality of your paintwork. Okay, so a nice soft cloth. That is absolutely vital. Now for a gloss frame, we are going to be using a gloss polish. For a matte frame, guess what you're going to use? You said it, a matte polish. Because the structure of the paint are different. Now this bike here is a really interesting one because this one from certain areas looks matte and from certain areas looks gloss. So I asked Nutriv directly and they said that it's actually a 50-50 hybrid, half of each. I don't really understand how that works. I mean, it looks great, however they've done it. So what I did was I tested the polish in an inconspicuous area just below the BB. And that's a really, really good way to find out how that polish is gonna react, okay? So you don't wanna be just going blindly in there and potentially damaging your pride and joy because you couldn't be bothered to do a 30 second polish test. Now, we all know the phrase wax on, wax off, okay? So look at the instructions and see how long it says between those two things, okay? If it says a minute, give it a minute. If it says 30 seconds, give it 30 seconds. But for best results, please follow the instructions. And you wanna put it on in kind of, I work in areas at a time, so I might do the top tube. And then as I buff it off, I'm doing it in small circles, okay? You don't wanna leave long streaks and you wanna make sure it's a really good area. So very distinct area, work like that, because what you don't wanna do is leave the residue of that polish that is then not buffeted out because it will kind of 
it's gonna it's gonna reduce how flashy bike looks okay so do it properly take your time put the kettle on get a cup of tea a cold beer whatever is your weapon of choice just take your time when you put the polish on it can be really good to have two cloths but i think if you're quite sensible you don't need them so you have your polishing area and then you have a slightly drier buffering area and um yeah just be sensible and you can do it perfectly adequately with just the one cloth now this i'm treating as a gloss frame and matte frames often come in for a lot of stick because some people say they're very hard to live with um yeah i mean is it completely undeserved probably not you might have seen like the fingerprints of death and etc where they never go away and they are a stain on your bike for all eternity well why is that it comes back to that peaks and troughs i was telling you about because the dirt will kind of get lodged in and down. So if you do have a matte frame, what you need to do, and I'm being really, really specific about this because it's really important, is you need to make sure it is clean. Not just clean-ish, I'm talking super clean. Rinse it off, wash it, and then I would think it's a really good idea just to go for, you know, just with a soft cloth and a bit of, you know, bike wash and just work on any areas that might need some work. Because like I said, you're trying to remove all the grease that will be get caught in those peaks and troughs I was talking about. Well, it can hang around in there so easily. Now, it is really important to do those steps. If you do not do them, your bike will not look as good as this one. Now, why go to all this effort apart from vanity alone? Well, a really good reason is not only will it help keep your bike looking good in the short term, but also it's gonna make it easier to clean and work on in the long term. A good polish, and I'm gonna say this wrong, I think it's like canal, canal bow wax? Canal bow wax, canal bow wax. I'm pretty sure that's it, canal bow wax, which comes out of Northern Brazil, is a really hard wearing natural wax. It's gonna give your bike not only a protective coat, but also it's gonna make moisture bead. So if, you know, maybe it's not as a beautiful tropic-like day such as this, which is quite dry, but if it's wet and you're washing your bike, it's gonna help mud glide off and it's gonna stop mud corroding you know, kind of scuffing up your frame. So it's, it's gonna look better in the long run. And my last tip on detailing. Full suspension bikes can be a bit of a nuisance because, you know, getting clean all these areas. What I want you to do is take the shock out or you could let the pressure out, but I suggest taking the shock out and you're gonna cycle the bike through its travel. Now this is for two reasons. One, it means you can clean in all the necessary areas, making sure it looks good from any angle, but also, and this is really important, when we use our bikes, they sit around in the early to mid stroke most of the time. Now, the way the bearing works, it's not doing a full rotation. Sometimes it can be actually quite a small movement. And so what that means is if you're doing most of your work in the early to mid stroke, the ball bearings can actually be pushing the grease away and they're struggling to stay lubricated. Now, what I want you to do is with the shock disconnected and you're there anyway, because you're cleaning it, cycle the bike through its travel. This way it's gonna help elongate the life of your bearings and keep the bike working as it wants to because it's going to re-lubricate the bearings okay it's going to disrupt those kind of grease pyramids that you get where the ball bearings aren't able to interrupt them on a regular basis so that alone is going to save you money in the long run it's going to save you maintenance and it gets your bike looking good polishing or not that is something you should be doing i'd say you know once a month once every six weeks just to keep it or give your bike the best chance it's got and there it is guys that is how to spend a lovely afternoon tinkering away on your bike in your living room just sitting down taking your time doing it properly now i'm sure there's probably some people that take their detailing really seriously especially with cars and there's undoubtedly some things i've missed some aspects i'm missing so get in the comments thank you very much and we'll see you next time